Greetings and welcome back to SmartWatchSticks.com. You remember the Z-Blaze Thor Ultra we recently reviewed full-on Android smartwatch? Well, they're back, this time with a rectangular-shaped Z-Blaze Thor SQ, as in square. It's a 4G Android smartwatch and it is sweet. And it's basic. It does all the things your Android phone kind of will do without all the fancy bells and whistles that we saw them trying to put in some of the other Android watches. We'll go into that in a minute. First, I wanted to show you the body module itself. It's a reasonably sized. It's a good, hefty thing, and it's got a nice, decent battery in it. And it's available from Banggood directly or from the AliExpress uh, Z-Blaze store. From Banggood, about $80. We can get you a coupon discount off of that, hopefully. And uh, we've got a link in the show notes for you from AliExpress. About the same price. It's a little higher here, but it drops down to roughly $80 or so. So think about it about in that uh, price bracket. And as far as the things that it has inside of it, it's pretty darn um, sophisticated. You're running Android 8.1 full touch screen. In terms of memory now, it's a little light, 2 gigabytes plus 16 gigabytes of storage. Sometimes there's options for like 4 gigabyte and 64 gig, but I'm not seeing that yet on this one. So it's a basic introductory Android smartwatch. The network connectivity is shown here. And yes, here in the U.S., uh, with my T-Mobile SIM in it, I'm getting good connectivity both for data and phone calling. Wi-Fi supports in here, navigation, all of the systems, GPS, GLONASS, BiteOut, AGPS, they're all supported. We have a tiny little 2, gig, two megapixel front camera, no side uh, camera. If you remember, the Thor Ultra didn't even have a camera at all on it. This is good for selfies and video calls and those kind of things. Speaker, mic, all these things are supported, the SIM cards there. Uh, languages, it's a little hard to read, but there's a ton of them, uh, really supporting languages across the board. Information reminders are there. Your health, uh, not big on it, but you do have heart rate, blood oxygen, and pedometer for step count. Then you get into all of your different functions. You got a 4G network for phone calling, and again, GPS. Google Play is in this one, and that means you can um, download just about any Android app that's out there. Hopefully, most of them will run on a watch format. You got Google Maps comes with it. Uh, there's a music player and so forth. Camera controls, phone books, browsers, calendars, calculators. We'll look at the stock apps that came with it as we go through it. You've got the uh, gyroscopic sensors for your step count and things. It's a 2.13 inch Ultra HD AMOLED screen display with the retina resolution 410 by 502 pixels at 391 ppi and really, really nice with a thousand nit brightness, easy to see outdoors. Battery, 950 milliamp hour, typical use up to 84 hours, heavy use up to 72, that's pushing it. Uh, I'd say 48, maybe if you're two days, two good solid days out of it. Charging about 45 minutes, magnetic charger uh, is what you use. And it's a four pin connector. You'll see uh, where you can actually uh, tie it to your computer and transfer data back and forth. Either pictures or recordings that you've taken or music um, or videos, whatever you'd like to transfer either direction. The material shown here and uh, size and weight round everything out. So beyond the module itself, we have the charging dock. As I mentioned, you see the four pins there will align and magnetically couple. That just plugs into your standard USB. We have a screen protector they've included in here that you can put on. Make sure you really clean everything and and don't get any particles or oil on uh, screen protectors when you put them on. There's an art to that. And then you got a uh, liquid silicone band, which is nice, removable. And I'm uh, going to put it on in just a second. And then the, finally, the uh, actual little manual, the user manual that comes with it. Product introduction shows you the sensors, where you put the SIM card. And 
the uh, charging manual, operating instructions, and some tips. And very simple. That's all they do to get you started. And I'm going to get you started right now. Our power button is the upper right one. And it comes up with the Z Blaze logo and it'll continue booting up. In the meantime, take a look at the quality of this build. This is the SIM SWAT and it's really finally been done right. You can uh, get in here with your fingernail or a little tool to pull this whole thing out, insert the SIM in a drawer and push it back in. In the meantime, the bezel, look at this. It's got screws on it, really nice, uh, well-designed buttons on the side, two of them. On the back, all your different sensors, your connector. We got speaker over here somewhere, microphone hole, pressure relief hole. It's uh, really, really, they've taken some quality time to make this one look good. Here we are. We're in our initial uh, uh, watch face. And this is really simple operation, guys. When you go this way, nothing happens. When you go that way, nothing happens. When you come down... You pull down a card just like you do on your phone. The basic stuff is shown. Pull again, and you get the full display. You've got your brightness control here. <laughs> Look at that. That's a 1,000 nits. It's just like really, really cool. Uh, and a nice dim level there. You can change it however you like. This is Wi-Fi connected, Bluetooth. You can connect it I, if you're going to wear earbuds. You don't need to connect it to pair to your phone because it doesn't do that. It's a real standalone phone, okay? It's not meant to collect data and transfer it over to your current phone. Um, this is a completely different. You got uh, another control there. You've got, this is your GPS, and your uh, speaker volume, and this will shrink or increase the screen if you need to get to the corners if they're hidden and you can't get to them. Down here, this is cellular data. We have the T-Mobile SIM connecting in. This is a uh, low power mode when you put it in this, dims it down and does a bunch of other stuff. You can take it out of it. And there's airplane mode, just like uh, on your phone. And that's it. Oh, any notifications you've been sent will start to accumulate here. So instead of swiping up to get notifications, you swipe down and it, it'll all show up there. So the only thing left, really, is to swipe to the left. Here's where you get into all of your apps. And you can see them different ways by double tapping. You can have them uh, in a three by grid that runs down like that. Double tap again. You've got it in that honeycomb kind of a look. Double tap again, and you're back to the list, which is what we're basically going to use. You go into phone, you have all of the controls here. You can bring up your uh, uh, control for, for calling, your dial pad, contacts. Uh, voice recordings you can play back directly from here just like you would on a phone your overall settings will come back to you got a basic browser in this one but of course you can download chrome or any of the others um, it's just leaking linking you to the uh, basic google page at this point for that particular browser you've got a little sound recorder in this this is a test of the sound recorder you can see it's actually making a little signal over there i can pause it and if I keep talking, it's not going to record that. But if I stop talking, I'll be able to continue recording and uh, have cut out what was paused there. Hit the stop button. It's going to save that recording. Come over here to the recordings and we can listen to it. This is a test of the sound recorder. You can see it's actually making a little signal over there. I can pause. I'll be able to continue recording and... Uh, have cut out what was paused there. Nice, crisp, sharp, good high frequencies, good bass. Not bad at all. So that's a little built-in recorder, but of course you can download third-party audio recorders if you'd like to, too. You've got the basic calendar um, that just uh, shows you where you are in the month. It's not tied in with you putting appointments and thing on that, like that. You'd need to put in uh, the Google Calendar to be able to do that. You've got uh, your contacts and albums for pictures, uh, basic files. This is your file manager area where you uh, access that stuff. you got a music player in here. There's a bunch of sounds, I guess, that um, they've got in here already pre-installed for setting up uh, uh, you know, your sounds associated with your phone calls and whatnot. 
a stopwatch. You can start it, stop it. Oh, this is the countdown stopwatch there. This is a count up stopwatch here. And it's really nice to know that it not only runs in the background when you leave here, but if you uh, pull down your panel, this just turns you on and off, by the way, but a long press is how you power down. This will take you back, swipe down, and there's the stopwatch running. And you can do your laps and things like that uh, directly from your notifications panel, which you get to from swiping down. Back over here, it's keeping you where you were instead of going back to the beginning each time. Google Maps comes with it. Google Files. I downloaded that, but uh, just to make sure everything was working with Google Downloads. And you can use that files uh, as well for all of your stuff, as well as the one that's installed. Here's your basic heart rate. It goes through and measures it with the green dial. It's got pictures saying it wasn't on there, right? And um, it'll take your measurement, shows you the current time. And that's about all it'll do with it. It's not set up, like I said, to be doing continuous heart rate or transferring that to your phone. You really need a health watch for that. This is an Android watch. But it does give you that. you got your clocks, and then you've got blood oxygen. We can start check on that one. I guess it's doing it. And it's using both the green and the red diode there. See it over there? Boy, it's sensitive. If I don't have it covered, it, it real quickly it'll pop off. Now, ironically, it's showing the time in what I've chosen to be in 20, in 12 hour time. So it's 2.39 in the afternoon. And the heart rate was showing us in 24 hour time. A uh, little glitch, I guess. It's not tracking on the heart rate with the settings. But you can see down here, we're getting our heart rate reading and it gives you the success. And that's it. And that's pretty much what you've got for the uh, biometrics are those two. You got a really nice, bright, super bright flashlight in this one. And um, the full thousand plus nits of every pixel. A good little calculator here. Nice, nice size digits on it. And accurate, I presume. This is the place where you set up your particular personal information. Height, weight, age, gender. I love it that it ships with an age of 10 years old. <laughs> you often wonder, what's the target market that these guys are going after? Okay, 10-year-olds. One-click cleanup. Uh, just a quick operation to, you know, release straggling stuff in your memory. You got a video player in here, and there's a little sample video they put in. Double tapping just pauses it. I can't pinch and zoom it. Although I can probably scrabble forward and backward. Anyway, there you go. Okay, there's backwards. You can see it's moving slightly. It's kind of crazy they use something like this to demonstrate video on, but volume control is here. Brightness control is here. So it's working like the VLC um, player which is a great one to download if you want to, but the built-in player looks like it's got lots of capabilities as well already right there. That's in the videos. Your style settings, the themes, which are either um, square type or round type um, icons for your apps. And then you've got the styles, which we looked at, listing, the, the grid or the cellular mode, they're calling it. And then wallpapers, where you can take any of your photos or set a wallpaper as a background if you want to, uh, as opposed to black. I just run it on black. It's easier to see outdoors and stuff uh, with the high contrast that way. Your dial market now. This is where you can change the watch faces. We haven't looked at them yet, but um, the uh, watch does not accommodate the custom watch faces that many of the earlier Android watches do but they do have a rather extensive dial market that shows you a bunch of them. And you can pick any of the ones that are here and instantly add them to your dials um, on the watch uh, and delete them if you want to as well. When you see the little green square, that means that's something that I've already added. A lot of them are just a, a basic digital with a picture in the background that they've chosen, but some of them are pretty creative analog and digital style uh, watch faces. We'll take a look at those in just a little bit. 
Here's your step count information. I just redid the watch, so I have no step count on it, although I had about 2,200 steps before beginning this review, which is interesting. If you power down the watch and start it back up again, it seems to lose that data. So don't power down. Um, and I'm not talking factory restore. I'm just talking shut down and start up again. Lost all the records on my heart rate and walking and blood oxygen. They all were gone. Camera. Oh, gosh, I didn't comb my hair. Oh, oh, well, here I am. It's only got a front-facing camera. It makes it full bright, as you can see. Um, there we go. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent picture for a 2-megapixel camera. If you blow it up, it's not going to look great. But let's take a picture and uh, let's shoot a video. This is a little video that would represent doing a vlog or doing a, a phone call of some sort. And I think I just switched it back. Oh, maybe I just switched it over. I'm not sure. Let's see what we got. Okay, I only have a picture, but let's uh, do this part. Let's double tap it. Double tap it. Okay, it just goes one level. And we do not have pinch and zoom with it. So extremely simple camera, two megapixel, and that's about it. And then uh, switch to video, then start the video. There we go. Now we're actually recording, and this is what it looks like. And we stop it. I could pause it if I wanted to. And with the audio, here you go. There we go. Now we're actually recording, and this is what it looks like. At least it makes it full screen. That's kind of nice. Okay, and that's the camera and playback. Google Play Store in here, messaging for text messages. You got face unlock with the, the uh, camera up here if you want to lock, um, you know, put that security on here. A little apps market of sorts, which is uh, just some apps that they've set up that you can download directly. And I presume you don't need to log in with your Google account to get, uh, to get access to these. Highly recommend not using this. Use the straight Google uh, Play Store to download from uh, because it goes through that checks for any kind of viruses or malware or whatever. I can't attest to what the quality is of these apps that are in the app market, which is fed to us out of the servers uh, that they maintain. And then I downloaded on my own uh, this organized drawer. I keep hyping this every time I review uh, an Android watch because it's such a nice little app, and I wanted to test to make sure the Google Play Store was working. Here we go. I've organized all of the apps in alphabetical order in the rows of four and with the titles, and you can see there's all the apps we just looked at. It makes it a lot easier, in my estimation, if you have a lot of apps, that, and you know what your app name is, you can scroll quickly down and find it in the alphabetical listing. Settings... So first we've got networks, uh, network information where you've got your Wi-Fi and uh, hot spotting and all this traditional stuff you do with your network connectivity. Bluetooth is here. Um, this is for setting up Bluetooth earbuds and such. Uh, again, not for pairing to an app on the phone. Your overall display now. You got your brightness level control in here, which you can set whichever one you want. You can turn on the smart island concept and have it look at in, like any of these particular uh, designs. A floating window. Now, this is uh, sort of like an app we used a long time ago called Floating Toucher, where you have a little dot that shows up on the screen. There it is. It's on this side. Sometimes it's on that side, or you can move it wherever you want to. And when you tap it, it gives you a circle and you can do certain things with it like this when you tap on that will take you into showing you all the things you've had open if you want to switch to a different app uh, that you were using or you can throw them all in the trash basically clearing out your memory of uh, lingering apps that are in there and the dots still there it floats over everything and many many more things your volume you can go into settings your music player calculator, um, lots of stuff. Tap that button, it goes away. And again, you can move it anywhere you want to. And that came to us courtesy of the settings, which I can get back to many different ways. I'll go into it right here. And that was in display. And that was called um, floating window. 
and now it's disabled. You can set your sleep time as little as 15 seconds, as much as 30 minutes. And advanced is where you have the um, raise your, uh, uh, wake the screen when you twist your wrist. And you can have it time out for a different length of time. That uh, 3 to 10 seconds or follow the overall system uh, for that. Palm press the screen. You flatly put the, your palm over the screen and it'll turn the screen off. All of these use a little bit of battery, which is why they're giving you the option. Margin shrinking, that's that one icon we saw that'll bring the, uh, the edges in and generate a border distance. You can set your fonts. I'm running large. I like it a little bit better than just normal, but you got really tiny on this one because it's a uh, retina you know, resolution on here. Basic display size is default. Uh, you can see previews of what it would look like and there you go. You can see it changing slightly, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and then screen resolution. Don't touch that. Please don't touch it. If you mess with the screen resolution, it can affect where the touch uh, sensitivity buttons are supposed to be aligned with what you see. And if they're out of alignment, you can really mess yourself up and have a hard time getting it back to where it was. So I don't even know why they give us access to that. That should be like a developer function only for developers, but it's there. And that was again in display in the advanced. And I think that was the last thing on there. Continuing with settings, you've got sound where you can change all of your different volume levels, mute everything, do not disturb, and so forth. Advanced for these things. Um, let's get back out of there. Don't want to spend too long in all of this. Audio profiles now is, hello, open app again. Okay, settings has stopped. Well, good you guys are seeing this happening. And it looks like I'm frozen. There, I'm back again. I'm gonna... No, I'm not. Oh, gosh, I got to bail out of this. Okay, after messing with it a lot, it finally switched to this. And that time I could activate to close the app. This, guys, is what happens with two gigabytes of storage. You get going with so many things, or, or RAM, rather, uh, so many different things, and eventually it's going to mess up on you, um, and you saw the outcome of that. Um, but we were in settings. I was going to show you audio profiles. So in addition to individually changing everything, you can run these different profiles, which are predetermined blends of your audio volume levels across the board. Finally, you got storage, which uh, 16 gigabytes of space. You can free it up. You got some different categories of things. It shows you how much is in there, just like on your phone. Uh, apps and notifications, here they all are, and so forth. Uh, device security, you can do the screen lock on this one. Software update, current version is the latest, and it's running 2024, April 27th. Uh, and this is, what, May, middle of May. So, not bad. A very, very recent update. Locations where you activate GPS, turn it on, um, and it'll go into that high mode, high power consumption, show you which things are using it. I don't know how you turn it off for the camera. A lot of times folks want to turn their picture, you know, tagging off, but right now it's showing that it's being used for that. You can do a one-click SOS setup on this one, an acceleration for um, speeding things up, I guess. Uh, there's your basic Google, your power savings mode. After three minutes, the GMS service will be closed. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what, if they're talking GPS? GMS. Uh, oh, it's uh, the graphics? Well, you know, you guys know what they're talking about. Here's your reset options. Reset the basic stuff and erase all data if you want to return it to factory um, settings. And then more settings include um, your overall battery level and some power management information. Very extensive. And whoops. Sometimes you touch it and it goes into it if you don't slide it fast enough. You can schedule um, power on and off on this one if you'd like it to reboot itself or go to bed at night. 
your contacts, messages, and a disaster warning, which allows the broadcast to come in for uh, uh, amber alerts and other kinds of emergency uh, warnings. And I'll go ahead and oh, give it an OK, and it'll list them here too after they come in and happen. Uh, and that'll be on your watch as long as it's got network connectivity. And that was system. Oh, that, yeah, that's it. That's everything, right? Oh, no. System, where are we? We're in more settings. That's what we just finished up. And now we're into system. Okay, your language and input. This is where um, you can set up your different keyboard. It comes with a little uh, alphabetical keyboard, but you can switch it to the Gboard if you want to, your standard Google keyboard, which is what I've done. Your date and time, you can set that whole thing up and uh, turn your backups on or off and about. The watch is the Thor SQ, Android 8.1. It's running with 2 gigabytes of um, RAM and a 4-core kernel. And the IMEI, you guys don't need to see because that's what it's using for making my phone calls and such. And that is everything in the settings. And we're right back to the watch faces, which, last thing we want to cover, are the faces. So here's a, a stock face. And here's another one. I'll just show you the thumbnails, and we'll go into a couple of them. Here's one. It's a digital. It says smartwatch on the bottom. There are so many, so I'll just keep scrolling through them. There's a nice nighttime type analog one. Also gives you a listing of the uh, power level. This one is a fun one. I like that one. That's got some moving graphics to it. And, uh, yeah... Not much else you can do with it. All of these are available. This is downloaded from the store. All the rest of these I've downloaded as uh, examples of some of the faces that you can uh, install on your own. There's that one we saw that had the little green on it, remember? If you saw it, remember what that looked like? That's the actual face itself. Here's one that I was hoping would say, oh, there's a compass in here, but there's no compass because it doesn't change, the dial doesn't change. But there are watches, Android watches, that have compass, and this face, it actually changes as you move around and aligns with the, the compass settings. This is a fun one. It's got active buttons for things. You can tap there, go into your heart rate, tap there, go into your music uh, area, and so forth, phone calls, and gives you date and time and everything, analog and digital. Kind of a nice fireworks one, another good one for nighttime dark looking and a couple more and then here's where again you can get back to the dial market they call it now a drawback i find of this one is every single time it starts over at the beginning and you have to scroll through hundreds of these little pages if you want to get to um some that you haven't seen and the server's slow on filling it in so take some time set aside if you really want to get all the way through the listing of these it's going to take you a while no easy way to do it. There's no app to connect to to you know install them from the app, so you're really stuck doing it directly on the watch. Um, that's about it. I would normally show you the app right now, but there's no app. So let me give you a summary on it. Um, as a basic Android watch, my opinion, it's okay. Uh, it's not great. The fact that you've got a camera for front-facing use is good. It would be nice, really nice design claim to put a, ca a camera up here, point it out, because that's in the best location when it's on to, uh, you know, take pictures or videos. Speaking of on, you need to see it on. Uh, but it doesn't have that. Maybe a next generation Well, It's a dumbed-down version of a really robust Android possibility, as we've seen in the past. Android 8.1 operating system is a little bit weak on all of the things that it can do. But, you know, you've got a really nice AMOLED screen, deep, deep, dark uh, blacks and bright uh, colors. It's, it's great for what it does there. And uh, overall, with its functionality being Android and its ability to use a SIM card for data as well as uh, phone calling and texting, it meets the needs of a basic Android smartwatch it looks relatively nice. It is not the ultra 
Apple Ultra design. I'm so tired of all of the watches coming out looking like an Apple. Um, this has got a nice clean rectangular design. And if you prefer, as he reaches off camera, the, uh, here you go, the uh, round design, that's the um, Thor Ultra, which Ultra is the wrong word because it doesn't look like the Apple Ultra and all the other Ultras are Apple Ultra. Anyway, there's the round one. There's the rectangular one. They are both available. Uh, check out the review of this one, definitely, uh, if you want to know a lot more and go deeper because I've installed some custom apps and I explained those. So look for the review on the Thor Ultra for this one. And for the Thor SQ, once again, it's available from Banggood. And um, we should have a coupon discount for you. It's coming in right around $80. Or you can go to the Z Blaze official store on AliExpress where they have it on special right now, also for 80 bucks. That's it for today. Another Android watch. I'm glad they're still making them. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.